Welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to zero. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. To cast spells or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn, you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Play a land now. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. Crimson Mage will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. Now, he will cast a spell. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. He had to use up or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned sideways. Mana costs can be more complex than Crazed Goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. When a player gains control of a creature, it can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the Crazed Goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. Now it's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To cast this spell, play a second land, and then choose the creature that costs two green mana. This creature's power and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. Now, Crimson Mage will play a land and then attack us with the Crazed Goblin. The Crazed Goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. Now you have a chance to respond
If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with summoning sickness can block. Block the crazed goblin! During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed Goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from Play another land. Now it's our chance to attack Crimson Mage. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your... It's important to know that, in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. This time, we're gonna try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Now, attack with both of your creatures. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops, so he'll take seven damage. Awesome. During the main phase after combat, go ahead and play your land. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature next. Crimson Mage will play a land and attack. Things are looking good.
all you need to do now is attack with everything. In Quest 2, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. For your second quest, you'll be using a black deck. Black's specialty is removing your opponent's creatures. Your opponent is Azure Mage. We arrived to this game already in progress. As you can see, a lot of dueling has gone on so far. But with no creatures on the battlefield, it'll take a miracle to survive the next few turns. It's Azure Mage's turn, and she attacks with her last remaining creature, bringing your life total to two. looks promising. You've drawn Assassinate, a sorcery. Sorceries are cards intended to be used a single time. Assassinate is a card that can destroy a creature of your choice, as long as it's tapped. Since you're at two life, you'd better use it on Azure Mage's creature before it kills you. Now, Azure Mage will cast some spells. Divination allows the player to draw two cards, a signature blue spell. Now your opponent has a creature that has a special ability. Zoom in on the card to find out what makes Wind Drake difficult. Without another Assassinate card, you have no way to destroy Azure Mage's Windrake. What will you do to stay alive? You're in serious trouble. That Goliath Sphinx can kill you with one hit. But the good news is that your vampire Nighthawk can kill any creature it deals damage to because it has death touch. Here's an interesting decision. Do you attack with your Vampire Nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block the Goliath Sphinx with.
on a powerful sorcery. Rise from the Grave can reanimate creatures that are in a graveyard. Now's your chance to take that Goliath Sphinx as your own. It appears safe to attack with your zombie Goliath. for the win. As you play more magic, you'll run into many kinds of spells and creature abilities. Look for spells that fit your play style. In Quest 3, we'll learn about spells with more permanent effects. For your third quest, you'll be using a white deck. White's specialty is amassing an army of small, efficient creatures. Your opponent is Onyx Mage. You've drawn an enchantment. Enchantments are powerful spells whose effects are constant as long as it remains on the battlefield. Honor of the Pure, for example, increases the power and toughness of all your white creatures. See how your creatures' power and toughness have increased? Now, attack Onyx May. Also, your Honor of the Pure will affect all your creatures as long as it remains on the battlefield. Oh no! It appears that Onyx Mage has put a stop to your advancing army. If you attack now, the results might not be good. Perhaps waiting might be the best strategy for now. Now you have a chance to take care of this Minotaur problem. Creatures have the ability to block in groups. In this situation, your glory seekers will be able to destroy the Minotaur Abomination. But in the process, one of your glory seekers will also die. drawn a special kind of enchantment, an aura. While enchantments affect the game globally, auras affect specific things, usually creatures. 
this one looks especially useful right now. This aura allows you to target any creature on the battlefield. been pacified, it's time to renew your attack. Onyx Mage has cast an aura on your Glory Seeker. The effect leaves it as a 1-1 creature. Night Guard Patrol has some special abilities. Zoom in on it to learn more. for the win. As you play more magic, remember that enchantments can help you win the game, either by improving your creatures, removing your opponent's creatures, or other cool effects. In Quest 4, we'll learn some tricky spells and interactions. For your fourth quest, you'll be using a blue deck. Blue's specialty is disrupting its opponent's plans, drawing cards, and using difficult to block creatures. Your opponent is Jade Mage. Jade Mage cast an instant. Instants work just like sorceries. They apply immediately to the game and are then discarded, except they can be played at any time. This spell makes her rumbling Bayloth larger, but only until the end of the turn. Cancel. 
a spell that counters another one. Countering stops a spell from happening. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, like summoning a creature, you can respond to it with an instant like cancel. If you counter your opponent's spell, it will go to their graveyard and the mana they used is still spent. If you attack now, you'll be in danger of losing the game. Better not attack until you have better choices. Okay, now Jade Mage has cast another giant growth. But instead of letting it make her rumbling Bayloth bigger, you can res- Now you've cast a spell, Cancel, targeting Jade Mage's spell, Giant Growth. This zone, where spells live before they resolve, is called the stack. Every player can add more instants or abilities to the stack in the same way. Archaeomancer, a creature with a triggered ability. That means when something specific happens, this card will automatically do something special. Many creatures have a triggered ability when they enter the battlefield. Archaeomancer, for example, will retrieve an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Blocking creatures take all the damage from the attacking creature, but if a creature with Trample is blocked, it will deal enough damage to kill the blocking creature and deal its remaining damage to the defending player. Stop the timer to counter this spell. The d
powerful ways to surprise your opponents or thwart their plans. Practice using the stack with tricks like Giant Growth, Cancel, and others. In Quest 5, we'll suit up interesting creatures with equipment. For your final quest, you'll be using a red deck. Red's specialty is aggressive, quick creatures with interesting abilities. Your opponent is Alabaster Mage. drawn Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature with an activated ability. That means this creature allows you to take an action, pay a cost, and then this creature does something, an effect. For example, just like attacking, abilities that require a tap, like Prodigal Pyromancers, can't be activated while a creature is summoning sick. Alabaster Mage has cast an equipment. It usually improves a creature. Casting an equipment spell only puts it on the battlefield. To attach or reattach it, you need to pay its equip cost. Equipment remains on the battlefield even if the creature leaves.
auras, if a creature with an attached equipment leaves the battlefield, the equipment remains, ready to be reattached for the same equip cost. Like equipment, there are many artifact cards in Magic. Artifacts are usually colorless. This means that any color of mana may be used to cast them. Even some creatures are artifacts. Anything that affects artifacts can affect artifact creatures as well. You drew Torch Fiend. It has an activated ability that doesn't require tapping. These can be used even when a creature is summoning sick. Torch Fiend's ability requires you to sacrifice it, put it in your graveyard, to get the effect. Dragon Hatchling. Its activated ability costs one red mana. All activated abilities may be used as many times as you can pay the cost. Be careful, the ability only lasts until the end of the turn. Volcanic Dragon. It has haste. This means it's not affected by summoning sickness.
and activated abilities are interesting tools that can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Use them wisely.